Well, it is a nice autumn day here in southwest Missouri, but it's time to start thinking about wintertime. And if you're wondering how cold your quail can survive, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hey there, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today we're going to be talking about how cold your quail can handle, how much cold they can handle, because winter time's coming. It's that time of year, at least if you live in, in you know, the United States, North America, you know, winter time's coming. Uh, like I said, today's a nice autumn day. It's not hot. It's not cold. It's, I mean, I'm in shorts and a t-shirt today, so it feels a little bit weird to be talking about this, but again, it's getting there. We're getting close to it. Now, I've addressed this topic several times in video before, but figured it was a good idea to go ahead and address it again for new subscribers or people that may be new to keeping quail and haven't seen some of the old videos. So what do you have to worry about when it comes to wintertime and keeping your quail outside? Honestly, not much. Quail are incredibly cold hardy. So as long as they have a way that they can get out of the wind, out of the weather, uh, they're going to be fine. And you'll notice my hutches are built where I have uh, the, the screened in section right here and it's they're all wire floor, all wire on the screens on the sides. So they get plenty of ventilation right here. But I have a section right here, which I'll take you in and show you a little bit closer, that's all closed off basically. And it has a sandbox in it. So they're blocked from drafts from above, from below. What I put on the top here on this section, just that section over there is a clear I don't know what that is, six mil plastic maybe. It's clear plastic, so they get light in there. Um, but they also get, uh-oh, what do you catch? I think he almost got a squirrel. Sorry, got distracted by the dog again. Max, come. <laughs> if you've been watching my videos and you saw the one last week where I got distracted by him, he did eventually find the skunk. I don't think he got a hold of it, but he got sprayed. It was early morning. It was right before I was going to work. Luckily, my wife was off work that day, so I left him outside. She got to wake up to a rude awakening and give the dog a bath. But anyway, he's okay. He's no worse to wear for it. Hopefully, he's learned his lesson and won't get into him again. So where were we? Um, so yeah, this covered off section right here. Clear plastic on the top. Um, it's all blocked off from the wind, so they can get in there, they can get out of the wind, out of the rain, out of you know whatever's coming, snow, whatever, any of those kinds of things. And they do fine outside all winter long. Now I live in southwest Missouri, so our winters are not incredibly harsh. We do get pretty cold though. We get down below freezing and we'll stay down below freezing for a regular time. We get down to negative 10, negative 15 degrees sometimes. It usually is not that way for prolonged periods of time, but we do get down there. And I'm talking temperature, not wind chill. So it, it gets cold here, but there are places that get much, much colder than what we get. And I had a viewer recently, sorry I've forgotten your name, but he left a comment saying that they get down to negative negative 35 degrees Celsius, and that's somewhere around negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. Um, and he wants to know if the quail are going to be okay outside, and I'm, you're going to have to look that up because I can't do the conversion between Celsius and Fahrenheit in my head, but it averages around in there. Now I have reports of people keeping quail outside down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit's a little bit colder than that, but honestly, I think they do fine in negative 30 degree Fahrenheit as well. But if you're worried about it, when it gets down that low, down below, say, negative 20, you know, you could put some kind of heat lamp in there or something like that, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. The one thing I would recommend is change your waterers out if you haven't already. And what you don't want to use, let me grab one, I'll show you real quick. What you don't want to use is something like this for water in the wintertime because quail are kind of stupid. They'll get inside this bowl, even if it's got water in it. And when it's that cold, it's going to freeze pretty quick. Their feet are going to freeze to the wire. You're going to have all kinds of problems with that. So you want to use something that has a lid over it. What I use in the wintertime is something very similar to my feeders. And I'll take you over there and I'll show you what my feeder looks like here real quick because I don't have one of my waterers out here, but it's the same thing. So it'll work. So this is what I use for both a feeder all year round. Um, it's just a Tupperware style container. It's got holes cut in it. They stick their heads through and they eat there. It keeps the waste down. They don't, it minimizes how much feed they waste because they are very messy eaters. But I also use the same type of setup for my water in the winter time. And I keep a couple of them because uh, what I'll do is I'll fill it up with water till about here. Uh, just below the holes, they'll stick their heads in there and get drinks out of it, and it's got a lid on it so they can't get in it and get it all messy, get their feet wet, you know, get froze to the wire, any of those kinds of things. And then I just trade it out once a day. So I, I'll give them water in the morning, they'll come and get their fill, 
And then in the evening time, I'll come back out, I'll take it out because it's frozen solid at that point. And uh, you don't, I mean, this is cheap plastic. It's thin plastic. You don't want to try to beat ice out of it. You'll crack it and break it. Um, so I just trade it out with another one, fill it up to about there with water. They'll get their drink out of there and they'll, they're fine. That's all. That's really all you need to do as far as water in the winter time. Now I know people have gotten um, heated waterers for them. Let me put this feeder back. We'll talk more. All right, so like I said, I know there's people that have gotten heated waters for your quail, for your birds. I don't know how well they work. I really don't have any experience with those. Um, I don't have power that runs out here. I'd have to run an extension cord from the house all the way out here. That's part of the reason why I don't do it. And part of the reason why, you know, the other part of the reason, I guess, why I don't do it is because I just don't have any faith in that. I don't really think a heated water um, is gonna work all that well, unless you can heat the water bowl itself. Um, like I said, you want some kind of lid over it so they don't get in it. Um, I, I don't think that's gonna work very well. Just Heating, like my automatic watering setup with a five gallon bucket hanging in the tree right here, feeds the water through the tubes to these water cups back in the back. I don't know that you can see them right now, but if you've seen my other videos, you know what I use. Um, I, I don't believe heating the water in that is going to keep the water from freezing at the level where the birds are getting that. So I could put a, a, a heater in that five gallon bucket, keep the five gallon bucket from freezing but it's going to still freeze in the lines or worse yet it's going to freeze right there at the point where the birds are going to be getting the water out of it so you'd have to have some kind of pump to circulate it around to keep it from freezing uh, i don't know i mean there may be some solutions out there for it but again i don't really find it that necessary i just switch out to using those types of waters in the winter time change the water out twice a day and they're fine it's really not that much work and it works just fine all winter long all right so let's take a closer look at um oh, just walk through a spider web. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at the uh, inside of this hutch right here. This is the side that's closed off. And uh, let me get it open here. Make sure I don't have any birds sitting around here. Got a couple of them, but they're not going to the front. They're going to go to the other side, I think. Clear it out. So I'll bring you in close here so you can see kind of what we're talking about. All right, so maybe you can see this now. This is all closed in. You've got the sandbox right here. I do have a little bit of a wire floor section right here, but the rest of it is all sandbox right here. So they can get in here. They're completely protected from any drafts from above because I've got the plastic over the top that, that closes that off. They're not gonna get rained on in here. They've got all protection from all sides from the wind. This is plenty adequate to handle like I said, down to negative 20 degrees. If you get down to negative 20 degrees and you stay that way on a regular basis, this is all you need. That's all you need to make sure your quail are healthy and happy. So, you know, like I said, I don't really know how well they do below that kind of uh, temperature, below negative 20. Um, if you're getting down to negative 30, negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit on a regular basis and it stays that way for a prolonged period of time, leave me some feedback below if you've gotten quail, if you've kept quail in those kinds of conditions. I've had viewers from Alaska that keep their quail outside in unheated barns and unheated cages just like mine and report that they do just fine in the wintertime, but I don't know exactly how cold their temperatures they're talking about. And the viewer that made the comment about negative 36 degrees Celsius, that's pretty darn cold. And I don't know if that was a wind chill or an actual temperature you're talking about. If it's a wind chill, well, then it's fine. You don't need to worry about it. Just give them some way to get out of the wind and they're going to be just fine. If it's the actual temperature and you stay that way for a long period of time, you may want to look into adding some kind of heat lamp or something like that just to give them a little bit of relief from that. But most of the time, it's not going to be necessary. I have never had a problem with any of my birds in the wintertime. But again, I'm only talking about down to negative 3, negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. We very seldom get any colder than that and we usually don't stay that way for prolonged periods, periods of time. So anyway... Hopefully this clears up a few things. If you had questions about keeping your birds outside in the wintertime or wanted to know how well they do in the cold weather, again, they're incredibly hardy birds. They're going to do just fine as long as they have a windbreak, a wet, you know, can get out of the weather somehow or another. You, you really don't have much to worry about. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and as always, God bless.